I'm not actually due to see these, as uh, anyone who was uh, wondering. Uh, I'm so, so I'm sorry to disappoint you. But um, in, uh, although we don't have Jean uh, Seaton, as scheduled, we do have Glo uh, Joe Glanville, who is the, uh, the uh, editor of uh, uh, Index on Censorship, and Britain's, which is uh, Britain's uh, leading organization promoting freedom of expression. She previously uh, uh, worked as a current affairs producer at the BBC, has edited a collection of short stories by uh, Palestinian women, and regularly contributes to publications including The Guardian. Uh, and then we have uh, Majid uh, Nawaz, and uh, he's the director of and co-founder of Kilian. Quillian, is it? Okay. Uh, the world's first counter-extremism think tank. Uh, he was formerly on UK uh, national leadership for the Global Islamist Party, his, his book, Taria, uh, before being imprisoned in Egypt for belonging to the group. In prison, he um, was adopted as an Amnesty uh, International prisoner of conscience, and um, uh, he began to change his views and now engages in counter Islamist writing and thinking. Please correct me if I say anything um, false. That was correct. That was all correct. Good. Good. And, uh, and Hopi Sen, on my right, is a blogger uh, who was long listed for the Orwell Prize for Blogs in, uh, in 2009. After leaving a career in advertising, he worked for the Labour Party, try not to boo, as a regional press officer, just kidding, and uh, then as the, uh, head of campaigns for the Parliamentary Party, correct? He now works uh, for a member of the House of Lords. Uh, now, the whole, the, 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 when I was asked to do this, I have to say I thought this was a fantastic subject, thought crime, and thought crime is something which is quite close to my heart, actually. I, I actually... I'm in favour of uh, thought crime on the whole, but uh, one of the, uh, the the first things that, uh, that um, occurred to me is actually whether we should clarify so it's whether there is whether we agree what thought crime is, uh, what is it, um, does it exist, and um, I just thought first of all I might just throw that that question out uh, uh, to each of each of you and. Um, uh, before we get a bit more, um, what, in general, what do you think thought crime is? What is thought crime? I suppose thought crime is is as far as you can go in totalitarianism, in the in the in the um, bullying and control of a totalitarian state, where its control is so total that you feel that you are being watched and possibly exposed at any point. That it's not so much just a matter. Of, it's no longer a matter of what you say or what you do. It's a matter of what is actually in your head. And whether that is true or not, you are in such a state of, of, of intimidation and fear that you <clears throat> do not even feel that your thoughts are private. And so what was, and, and it's, the, it's, it's as far as you can go in terms of state intimidation of, of an individual. And what was obviously so brilliant about what Orwell did in 1984 with, with the telly screen that, that can watch you but can also hear you with the fact that you've got all these spies who, even if you have a twitch, if you have a twitch, that's enough for you to be taken away and vaporised. And so it's, it's, I would say, the most extreme satire and most brilliant satire that's ever been done of the length of the impact of a totalitarian state on an individual. Okay, and uh, Majid, for, what, what, for you, what is, what is mm. thought crime? I think it's an oxymoron, but... Um, it's a useful way of summarising uh, what we are trying to say, which is holding people to account for something they may have expressed or said or done that reflects their thoughts. I think it's actually, uh, and the reason I say it's an oxymoron is because it's actually impossible to legislate uh, over thought. It's impossible to uh, criminalise thoughts because nobody actually knows what anyone's thinking. All we can possibly judge them by is what they say and what they do, what they confess to or what they're forced to confess to, and then they're held to account because of what they're accused of saying or doing or, or confessing. Um, <clears throat> but it's useful because usually, uh, usually what people uh, are trying to deduce from speech and from behavior or action or association is an accusation that you don't believe in uh, the ideology of this particular setup. You know, it's usually the case that it's a totalitarian setup where these things happen. And so they're usually accusing the person of not believing in the ideology of the state, of being an enemy of the state. But it is usually sort of actions or speech that they're looking at. Um, but I do think it's useful, though I do think that it's, 
it's, it's an oxymoron, but it's important to, to say that it's an oxymoron because uh, we want to emphasize that it's actually impossible to criminalize thoughts, and any regime that tries to is actually uh, engaging in, in an exercise of the impossible, and therefore um, perhaps they shouldn't even try in the first place. Okay. And I hope people, how, what, are you, what is thought crime to I, you? I agree with much of that, I and mean, I think what it comes out of theatrically and in, and in the novel is it's the reduct the reductio ad absurdum of totalitarianism. It's the attempt to uh, control every element of someone's life, even down to their individual. And if you think of the start of, of 1984, the beginning of it is uh, is Winston Smith leaning back in a cubby hole in his flat, uh, hiding from the telly screen and writing a diary. And the first thing he writes isn't particularly political; it's the cat of visit to the cinema. But that assertion of his own individuality, assertion of his own mental space, is the beginning of thought crime because it is an assertion of something that can't be controlled by the state, that can't be controlled by an outside force. And as soon as you make that step, you expose the ridiculousness of totalitarianism to the system, and therefore the need, which is the rest of the novel playing out, uh, to destroy that, to destroy that individual spark, because totalitarianism can't work, can't function with that ability for people to express themselves and the conclusions it takes you to, which is once you express it to yourself, you then have to take it to someone else. You have to have the ability of the need to share that thought, which is what drives Winston Smith sort of incompetently throughout the novel to do.